Joe Rafferty, uh, Chief Executive of Mersey Care NHS Trust. Um, well, look, congratulations on you know great facility. I suppose Thank you're you. the top boss of the whole thing. I, I just wonder whether sort of worried look in your eye, going, how much is all this costing? I mean, it, it, it must. You've got to make it all add up somewhere, and we all know, we all know times are tight. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Um, we didn't spend an absolute fortune on on Clockview. We just designed it really well. We worked with service users and carers from a very early stage, uh, and it's remarkable how much cost you can take out but make it absolutely right for people because you listen to the sorts of folks who, who ultimately are going to use it. I think the other thing I would, I would say is because of some of the philosophy we have here about recovery uh, and thinking about how we deal very differently with patients and so on, you've heard about no force first. We know that that actually costs less money than it does to keep on restraining people. That's about really um, focusing on keeping restraint as a, a last com resort. Completely keeping it as a last resort. There are far fewer injuries, therefore there are far fewer times, uh, days off work and so on. And we know as a trust, for example, we can save about a million pounds a year if the sort of no force first work operated right across our organisation. And as the lady from Bernardo's was saying earlier when I was speaking to the three young carers, it's like, apart from anything else, apart from giving them the support they so obviously deserve, that they're going to help, they're going to end up in, in, in some kind of mental health situation as they're older if they're yeah. not given their support. Well, so that the, the, the cost will be get more cost. That's absolutely right. And, and you know, we, we need to remember that mental health is really open to prevention. You know, our mental illness is really open to good prevention. Um, you know, so by working at an early stage, by intervening at an early stage, we can see really positive benefits. Other interesting things, since we've opened, we've only got about six months worth of figures, but people stay a shorter period of time here. So it's a more efficient uh, unit in that respect. So, so I, I think the cost benefit really falls in favour of what we've done. Can I ask you a bit about the language we use around mental illness? Because it, it, it's really interesting. We're putting the script together for this. We're saying that like, I'm, I'm, I'm running out of ways, other ways to say mental health, mental health issues, and you can get sort of, sort of, sort of very. I feel as if I've sort of got very big knickers about it. Do you know what I mean? Start mm. thinking we've got to be very careful about this. But you know, we, we we all use that kind of language. You said you said Iris earlier said, well, I'm I'm generally potty anyway, which is. Probably not the word you, you choose, but we, we, that's in, the, in our lexicon, isn't it? We always talk about lunatics taking over the asylum. You know, we, it, 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 these kind of words are in our language. You, you talk um, the stigma, and, and it is there, and it still remains. And I had difficult times with some people that live around me um, when they found out I had a mental illness, and I tackled that. I didn't tackle it very well at first, but then I got some inspiration from some people I work with at Mercy Care. And I came home one day um, and someone referred to me. They knew I was there and they referred to me as, oh, the nutter, I won't say the actual word, yeah. they said. Uh, the nutter's back in the street. And I could do one of two things. I could have run in and kept like a recluse like I used to be. Or I could tackle it in the best way I know how, with my own humour about myself. And I tapped the worst one on the shoulder and I said, please don't tell anyone, everyone, that there's a nutter in your street because some of us nutters are actually quite nice, you know, and every street will want their own. And, and that really made me feel better about myself. I wasn't ashamed of who I am. And we need to make sure that that happens for so many people because, as I was going to say before, which I, I lost a little bit, mental illness can happen to anyone. Mm. It could happen to you or anyone mm. in this room or to anyone you love, and why shouldn't they have the best care possible yeah. in a unit like this? We need more units like this. So, Richard, I've got you, disgracefully, I've sort of immediately put you down as an unreconstructed scouser. I don't know why. I think it's when you said about the, uh, you know, there were people talking about nutters running around with meat cleavers yeah. and all that, but do you find yourself having to be careful with your language? Well, being a counsellor, you can't go on and call people yeah. nutters, which they just did. <laughs> Um, but but of course you do. The, the language is if you you give somebody a name, that name's going to stick, and that name will spread. And that's unfortunately when we were building this, that's the sort of reaction that we we got. Mm. But with careful, controlling environments and and giving people the information that they needed, rather than just hearsay mm. and what what they hear off the telly and what they see on the telly, then it, it changed perceptions. And the lady said before on, on the street interviews. I didn't know anything about it. We spent two and a half years <laughs> doing a consultation. Where, where, where was she? Yeah. 
What are the words in general usage that offend you, Catherine, or are you, you, are you relaxed about it? I think I'm fairly relaxed about it. I think um, perhaps in the early days I did get quite hung up on what people call you, but I now tend to have grown a bit of a thick skin to it, really. Uh, I mean, as Iris says, it's, it's, it's not, you know, if, if something's really offensive, then it's not nice. Um, but it, it's... I think the more we talk about it the more we, we break down that stigma. And I think coming on programmes like today um, and talking about it really helps. I would hope so. The, the, the NHS is such a huge organisation, Joe. I, ju I just sometimes wonder if there's a kind of a silo effect and best practice isn't being shared round. Do, do people know about this in Kent? Yeah. Or in, you know, in, in Aberdeen or, or wherever. Do they know what's going on here? Yeah, I mean, your, your point's a good one. And uh, often we do operate in a silo. But we're part of uh, a group called Positive uh, Practice in Mental Health. There are about 56 different organisations involved. So we've continued to host visits here and showing people around. And actually, we've been, we've been really determined to have a, a very high media profile for clock view i mean i think for really good reasons so i think we keep we keep trying to get the message out and and uh, learning as we go but certainly we're sharing ex experiences of what goes on here i mean richard somebody else wants to open somewhere like this around the country they should call you stick your underpants on outside your trousers and go to fly <laughs> straight down and tell them absolutely how to do it. no doubt about it give me a ring and I'll, I'll tell you the positives about this place plus you've got employment opportunities that it's brought it's open and it, our, our library our local library was saved you should, which is due to, to close because of government cuts. And what's happened now? Clockview moving a team into there, and it's going to save the library. Okay, lovely talking to you all. Look forward to talking a little more later. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you.